Hey everyone, today we're going to look at Synology's Cloud Sync and we're going to determine if it's a true backup. So before we get started, let's take a look at how Synology's Cloud Sync actually works. There are three types of sync processes that you can run. The first is where you upload local changes only, the second is where you download remote changes only, and the third is when you do it bi-directionally. Based on your use case, you're going to have to pick whichever one makes sense for you. The other important thing to note is that there are a few different cloud providers that you can select, but in this example, I'm only going to be using Google Drive. So what exactly is a backup? A backup is a copy of data that's taken and stored elsewhere so that you can use it to restore your original file in the event of data loss. So technically, Synology's Cloud Sync works in a way that allows you to take files from the local NAS and upload them to the cloud. But is that a true backup? That's what we're going to be looking at today. And to do that, we're going to look at a few different scenarios to determine if the functionality actually fits your needs and if it is actually a backup. The first scenario we're going to look at is if you update a file. So when you update a file, the file changes and it syncs to the cloud. This is great to ensure that your data exists in the cloud, but in the event of something like ransomware, where all of your personal files can get encrypted, those encrypted files would actually sync to the cloud as well. So in this case, when you're looking at a sync, you're really looking at the source and the destination keeping the same files at the same time. So in the event of ransomware, the files on the destination cloud would be encrypted as well. And there's actually nothing that you can do. Because when you rename a file on your local NAS and it syncs to Google Drive, Google Drive actually treats it as a new file. Now this might not be the case for all cloud providers, but it's important to note that you might not be able to get any data back in the event of ransomware. So now that we went over two pretty simple examples, you can see the pain point here because if you have many files that change and need to be restored, this is a really tedious task to actually restore all of your data back to your NAS. However, for single files, viewing the prior version history might not be too bad. And in this case, it actually works well. The second scenario we're gonna look at is actually deleting a file. Now, when you delete a file, the file will remove from the destination and it will go into the recycle bin or trash of the online cloud storage. The only way the files don't delete is if you specify that you don't want them to delete from the destination folder. The third example we're going to look at is bidirectional syncing. So in bidirectional syncing, the source and the destination will stay in sync at all times. So if you add or remove a file on the source, it will update on the destination and vice versa. So now that we've looked at these three scenarios, it's pretty clear to see that this is not necessarily a backup. And when you're looking at backups in specific, it's not too bad to follow this process if you have to restore one or two files. But if you're looking at hundreds or thousands of files, this is not an option. So what is CloudSync good for? CloudSync is great if you want to keep the data on your local NAS synced to a cloud service that you can access it from all of your devices. Now Synology offers a bunch of tools that actually allows you to access your NAS directly using one of their first party applications. But it's important to note with CloudSync that there will be two different versions of the file, one on the local NAS and one on the cloud service. So if you think from a workflow perspective, if you work on a Word document on your local PC and it's stored on your NAS, when you save it, it will sync to your Google Drive. At a later time, you can take out your phone you can navigate to that file, you could update it, and then it will sync back from Google Drive to your NAS. This shows the power of the tool because it allows you to keep two different versions of the file, but keep them in sync together. So if we've clearly stated that Synology's Cloud Sync is not a backup, what is a backup and how does it function? And for that, I'm gonna show you Hyper Backup. Now I created a video on this already, and I showed you how you could use Hyper Backup to backup to Backblaze B2. But the important part to note here is the functionality. So when you're using Hyper Backup, you can actually restore an entire folder back to a point in time. So in the event of a ransomware attack where all of your files are encrypted, if you're using Hyper Backup, you can select the date that you want to restore from and all of your data will automatically be put back. And I think that that's the most important point that I want to make. CloudSync is not a backup because it does not allow you to go back in time and restore files and folders from the click of a button. 
Now that is not to say that CloudSync is not a great tool. And I truly believe that using both of these in parallel gives you the best of both worlds. So there are almost no scenarios where accidentally deleting one file will make you want to restore an entire folder's worth of data. And that's why using something like CloudSync is great because if you accidentally delete a file, you can go back to your cloud storage, restore that file and pick back up where you were. Using that example with Hyper Backup, you would actually have to restore the entire folder to get back your data. But in the event of a true disaster where you have to actually implement some sort of a disaster recovery plan, there is no way that Synology's CloudSync will actually help you. If you want to get technical, you would be able to access your old files through old versions, but you'd have to do them individually. Whereas something like Hyper Backup would allow you to go back to a point in time and actually restore those files. So using both of these tools at the same time allows you to ensure that your data stays up to date, but you also have backup versions in the event of true data loss. I highly suggest that you take a look at both tools because they're both great in their own right. You just have to make sure you're using the right tool for the right job. I'll leave a link in the description on how to use Hyper Backup and Backblaze B2. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, I wanna thank you for watching Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe. Thanks.